So that is the first squatter situation I've dealt with in California. Hooya moya, I just had my first squatting situation and boy, let me tell you, it was not fun, not really, not at all. I don't know why I'm doing that. So let's talk about what happened. I had a tenant book my place in California and they wanted to go direct, save some fees. I was like, no problem, we went direct. And I had built great rapport. We had a relationship, we talked it out. I had no reason to suspect anything. Well, they move into the property and basically within three or four days, I had sent them a you know a Stripe link and they paid with the credit card. Within three or four days, they disputed the charge. And I reached out, I'm like, hey, is everything okay? Like I was a little nervous because I was like, I, what, what's going on here? Like I thought we had a good rapport. And they were just like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Someone else on my account saw that credit card charge and they said it was fraudulent so they marked it as, as a dispute it was a total accident I'm gonna go and get it reversed right now and I was like okay I mean that seems like a simple enough mistake I, I guess I could see that happening and basically they called and got it reversed and the credit card company was like hey it'll take five to seven days to get off the account well I'm like all right so I'm communicating with them and helping them typical landlord stuff like things that were going wrong I was fixing it and then five to seven days pass, I'm like, hello, the uh, credit card charge has still not been disputed. And on top of that, now Stripe sees me as a threat and they're withholding some of my funds and it's like a whole ordeal. And they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I you know, there's nothing. Ah! No, no, Caleb. Let me just scratch my nose in peace. Anyways, five to seven days pass. I reach out, I'm like, hey, isn't, it hasn't really been reversed here. What's going on? And then it just, it kind of feels like I start getting the runaround. And in California, the, the tenant laws do not favor the landlord and so my, brain is going to like the most negative place ever, of course. And I called Jesse Vasquez, midterm rental expert, awesome YouTuber. And I'm like, dude, what should I do? And he's like, man, this exact thing happened to me, bro. Do not fall for it. You need to kick them out because if they've been there for 30 days or more, you are and I was like, oh man, I was like, I really don't want to do that. And then I reached out to another friend who has 200 midterm rentals in California. And I'm like, dude, what do you think? He's like, bro, you're gonna have to get them out. He's like, do not play with this. Show up to the place with the sheriff, escort them out. So I'm just like, everything is escalating. And I'm like, man, I don't want to assume the worst about this person because it does sound like a genuine mistake, you know? And I'm just like, oh. Anyway, I will post the update to the end of this video when I have it. All right, let's get to the fun part of this vlog where we talk about me launching a massively successful Airbnb that is gonna break every record. See you in a second. Another day, another dollar, my friends. Here's what we got going on in the raw built empire today. I'm heading back out to Austin, Texas. Surprise, surprise, to do a couple of things. First, I'm heading out to Pink Pickle to get some final B-roll shots for the channel because I actually haven't done an official reveal of that property yet. And I'm gonna check on my best property that we've ever launched before. I'll tell you more about that in a second. Hold on, let me set this camera down. Much better. Okay, so as you may have heard me talk about on the channel the past couple of weeks, uh, I'm launching a an interior design company specifically for Airbnbs and the idea is to create the most unique Airbnbs in the entire country and that company is called Funkit Interiors. I've partnered up with its Bridget bitch. You may follow her on Instagram already. If you don't, you totally should because she's the best designer out there, especially in the Airbnb space. Funkit designed the Pink Pickle. They're actually designing another one of my properties down the road here and we just finished setting up another property that will be, whoo, crazy, probably the nicest property I've ever launched. Well, not me, but me and the Funka team, and I'm really excited. So we're gonna go drive to Austin today, get some B-roll, check it out, and preview what I think will be the best Airbnb in Austin, Texas. But I'll let you be the judge of that. Popped in, shot, shot, I'm vlogging. Popping into the pink pickle. Really quick, we drove into Austin. I needed to come and check on some things and shoot some B-roll. Maybe as I talk about the B-roll, Caleb will show some B-roll. But this place is really looking good. I actually haven't done the final shots for this property and I'm excited to showcase it on the channel. So that video is gonna be coming out soon, but it looks really good in here. I had a little punch list. I talked about this in my last video, been knocking it out, cleaning up the backyard. I met with the pool person. I've gotten the cleaners sorted. Oh my goodness, so much work goes into launching a property of this level and size. Speaking of, now we're gonna hop over to our newly launched property. It's gonna rock your socks off. See you there. Dang it, I forgot to turn the lights off. I already put my shoes on, so I'm squeaking. If the guests are like, hey, there's dirt on the ground, I'm gonna be like, <laughs> must have been my handyman. 
You know, all jokes aside, I know that I just was sort of ranting about how much work goes into this property, but here's the deal. This property will be booked every single weekend of the year and the bookings come out to, uh, they're usually on the weekends, like $1,299 a night. I have a three day minimum, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Every weekend for the most part brings in between four to $5,000 on average. I actually just got a $4,100 reservation today and yesterday and I have a $5,000 reservation in October. So it's kind of crazy that when this property is fully cranking, it's gonna be doing between 15 to $20,000 a month. My mortgage on this property, by the way, is $3,000 a month. So run some math there. I've got expenses. I think they come out to about $60,000 a year. I think I'm gonna gross between 100 to 120K. So as much as I'm complaining, this one's a cash cow. We've arrived at the Airbnb and look at this little daddy that we found, a cyber truck and it's white. It's really nice. Should we do B-roll? Let's do B-roll. Hey, dude, for real, let's go. <laughs> All right, let's go. go it's sick. gift on earth. Okay, so apparently there's like a secret surprise in here. A great okay. surprise. Take us, take us on the journey. Let's go, bitches. Okay. I'm not gonna believe it. Go, oh, wait, wait, oh, wait, 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 go back, go back. Okay. Go, go, go. Well, hey, MTV, come to my crib. Oh my God. This is so cool. You Guys, right? I literally have goosebumps right what? now. What? Yeah, look at this. Do. I've got goosebumps. Yeah, I don't know if you can see on camera, but I do. This is so cool. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Aren't we all sinners? Aren't we all sinners? It's an escape room. Nuh-uh. The whole thing is an escape room. Yeah, this whole thing? Yeah. No way, for real? Clues. There's clues in there. What? You gotta figure it out. Okay, let me see. All right, so it's a speakeasy. There's a safe in here. I've gotta figure out the clue. And when I figure out the clue, this will open it. Oh my goodness. One eternity later. Oh. What is this? I feel scammed. It's a clue? <laughs> it's another clue? <laughs> I forgot to put the food in. You know how hard I work to get here? Taffy. Taffy, anybody? This one actually looks really good. That's not how you film things. <laughs> All right, it's golden hour right now. The sun is going down. So what I'm gonna do for the next like five minutes is I'm gonna shoot the B-roll of this place. But in doing so, I want you to see how amazing this place came together. It's so freaking rad. Check it out. B-roll interruption to just uh, really give a shout out to this fig tree. Holy crap, look at this thing. That's a fig tree of dreams. By the way, if you've ever wondered what it's like to shoot lifestyle photography, this is it. Yeah. This is what passive income looks like, baby. <laughs> So give us the update. Initially, yeah. you, you were, you were n nervous to go all in on the design. I was. Okay, the design is done. How does it feel? It feels amazing because we would not have been able to do this without Bridget, without Blue, without their whole team. I mean, just it wouldn't be possible. And this is gonna be the best Airbnb in South Austin right now. And it just feels great. We're on the verge of launching. It's gonna be fantastic. What do you think this property is gonna make every year? Uh, we're, our goal is 300 plus. Uh, gross for the year. Probably three hundred dollars a night? No, three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand. Yeah. That's three hundred thousand. <laughs> Guys, this is a star yes. student right here. This is one of my rock star students, dude. Thank you. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. Dude, I love it. It's so cool. By the way, what's it's the bad. what's the interest rate on this property? Two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah. Not bad. So, very nice. Not bad. Oh. I just had sake splashed all over my face. That's so like good good sheen on That's, it. Oh you're next then. You're next. Whoa damn it <laughs> Daddy's up. Ready? Oh my god! 21, 21, 21, 21. Let's go, baby! Go on, go they don't call me Saki Papa for no reason, baby! Holy moly! Dude, no way! Look at 
dude this is the most magical area ever sunset view over here you got your tv over here to watch sports you got your outdoor dining table you walk through the dorm room here and then you get your view of downtown austin whoa there's holy moly this is wild here we go the signature bridget disco balls <laughs> i love it oh my god dude no freaking way i love it look at this view no wonder you're gonna make three hundred thousand dollars a year pretty epic up here all right we're finally back in houston and boy do i have updates first update good design really does work oh my gosh i'm so excited to share the mini results of soco oasis which is the name of the airbnb that we were just at in austin texas comps put this property that if we just furnish it the regular way we were kind of thinking maybe 200 250 somewhere in there but with funkit design coming in and going all out with the design and just really making the most unique property in Austin, Texas. We had the estimates at 300 on the low end, though I think we're thinking like 350,000. So we're thinking this property will make 50 to $100,000 more as a result of our high-end design. And it's been four days, and boy am I happy to re <laughs> report. In four days, he has gotten $45,039 of bookings, which is crazy. Four days, he made 45 grand because of the Funkit team. Bridget Blue, Y'all are saints. As a friendly reminder, Funkit also did the pink pickle and I went all out with that design. I spent probably $70,000 on design and furnishings and all that stuff. And as a result, that property, I'm just gonna say on the low end is gonna do 100 to 120 K per year. It's probably gonna do more, but the comps said that that property should do 40 to 50. So I'm gonna be two, maybe three Xing the competition because of design. I love when our talent actually works. Mwah. And now for an update on thy squatter situation to end today's video. Also, really fast, we've officially launched Funkit, my interior design company that specializes in creating the most unique Airbnbs in any market. We will create the number one short-term rental that exists in whatever city you're in. I'm really confident about that now, now that we've proven this time and time and time again. We have two options. We'll virtually design everything and then you can go and set it up or we can come in person and actually set it up ourselves. If you want to learn more about Funkit, click the link in the description down below. And let me design your next Airbnb. So here's where we're at. Man, this has really conflicted me with the whole squatter situation. Cause like I said, had a really great rapport with the tenant, but you know, I talked to plenty of experts and they're like 30 days, you gotta get them out beforehand. And I really didn't want to escalate it to that. So I sent them a relatively stern text message where I said, hey, I'm trying to be flexible with you, but I can't get burned on this. So I'm gonna need you to wire me this month's rent and next month's rent. And if not, I'm gonna have to ask you to vacate the property. There is no other way around this. And fast forward, they actually ended up wiring the money. They actually ended up showing me a screen share of their computer that showed that they did dispute it and they got it withdrawn. And it actually all got resolved. And I think it was genuinely like a mistake. And I, I really can't believe it because there was just so many things where I kept explaining it to my friends, my peers, my wife, and they're just like, dude, you, you, are you not listening to yourself? This is crazy. I'm like, no, I really believe her. I really, really do. So I'm really glad it worked out and that I didn't get full aggressive and I wasn't like, I'm honestly just so relieved that it actually panned out and that I didn't go full aggressive and I just kind of trusted my instinct and I wasn't like, yo, out of my house. I need you out of here right now because I was close. I was close to that and I was patient and it worked out. So it's all okay. <laughs> Rob freaked out for no reason. Oh, I thought this was it. I thought it was curtains for Rob, but that is my official first squatting story in California or really ever as a landlord, short-term rental, mid-term rental, whatever you want to call it. And it's going to be okay. I'm going to be fine. Now I'm going to go work on my presentation because I'm speaking at Jesse Vasquez's conference, funny enough, uh, in a couple days. So catch you on the next episode of Rob Built. See ya.